completing your first century ride is no mean feat, regardless of the terrain it's ridden on. However, there are a few extra steps you need to take care of before hitting the road. Stepping up from 60 miles to 100 miles can feel daunting, but with these simple tips, you'll be on your way in no time. Before you look to step up in distance, you should invest time and research into a bike fit. The increase in training miles will put greater stress on any weaknesses that you currently have in your pedalling technique. A bike fit should not only cure these weaknesses, but also make you less susceptible to injuries and make you more efficient and more comfortable, which in turn will make you faster. One of the main things you'll have to change when training for 100 miles is you're going to have to ride more. It's not a case of riding 100 miles before the event itself. As if you can ride 80 miles, you're probably going to be okay riding 100. This is due to on the day, you'll have adrenaline pumping through your veins and you'll get the draft factor from riding with other riders. It's not just the case of training the body, as you will also have to train your mind for the challenge ahead. There will be times where doubts creep into your mind that you may not hit your target time or even finish the event at all. Therefore, chunking up the distance into smaller chunks or setting targets of certain climbs, landmarks or feed stations make it a lot more manageable than one 100 mile ride. The secret to success in a 100 mile ride is pacing. To get your pacing right, you need to look at the speeds you can sustain during training. You're not suddenly going to be able to go significantly faster than you already do. It's better to start off a little bit easier and finish strong than go off too fast at the start when you're filled with excitement and adrenaline and end up fading towards the end. Ultimately, an easier start and a strong finish will give you the best possible finishing time and it will feel more enjoyable. Just as important as pacing your ride is the importance of pacing your fueling strategy. You'll be on the bike for a number of hours and therefore your energy stores will become depleted and need replenishing. There are a number of options ranging from manufactured energy gels and drinks to homemade energy bars and real food to help get you around. Sticking to the general guideline of 60 grams of carbohydrates an hour across these sources should see you avoid the dreaded bunk. It is also best to test out what types of fueling sources work best for you in training.